Hi friends. Welcome to a lovely yarn podcast. My name is Amber and I am coming to you on January 9th. So it's a Monday morning, January 9th, 2023. My first official regular podcast of the new year. I wanted to take a minute just to thank everyone who watched my Vlogmas episodes and then who have also watched my two winter vlogs that I have posted recently. Uh, that means a lot and I'm really excited that you guys enjoy watching those. I plan on keeping the winter vlogs going throughout the winter as I feel inspired to film. I'm not really sure that I have a schedule for that. It's just going to probably be more of a random thing, uh, which is pretty much how it goes with me with podcasting. But I'm really excited to have a regular episode up. I um, have some some things to... I actually have two finished sweaters that I'm going to show you today. Those are my only finished objects. I feel like I should have more, but I... I'm wondering if I... Well, I did have more, but they've been gifted for Christmas and I don't have gifts. Or I don't have... I don't have um, pictures of them, so... You're not going to get to see those, but that's okay. I think those were mostly just socks anyway. But um, yeah, so I have two finished objects. I have some works in pro progress, and then I also have two projects that I'm going to share that I'm planning on starting actually today, if I have time. So how are you all doing? How are you enjoying the new year? As I discussed in my Vlogmas episodes, I'm not a big New Year's type of girl. I don't really make resolutions. No, I absolutely don't make resolutions. I don't really set goals this time of year either. Um, but I do have a word of the year and I shared that with my Vlogmas viewers. Actually, I may have shared that after Vlogmas. Hi, Molly. Hello. Come here. Come say hi my poor old puppy. <laughs> so you guys, if you watch my vlogs, you have seen her. Um, she has officially been promoted to geriatric status, according to my vet. So Molly hasn't been feeling well. Um, probably over the last year, we've seen her health decline and even more so in the last, I would say, three months. She is going to be 14 soon. So she is an older dog, but she is my little, <laughs> she is my little cuddly dog. She is my shadow. Um, again, if any of my vlog watchers will have seen her, she always cuddles up next to me. She's a sweetheart. Lily used to dress her up in baby doll clothes and push her in her baby stroller. So she's been with us I mean, we got her as a puppy, so for almost, for like 13 and a half years, maybe even a little longer than that. So it's sad. It's sad when dogs get old and unfortunately that's a part of life, but we're just loving on her. <laughs> huh? We're loving on you. Yes, we are. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, so I chose a word for the year, which is delight. And that is pretty much the extent of my New Year's practices. I tend to do more intentional goal setting um, like in August, September when we're starting a new school year. And that's probably because I'm a homeschool mom. And so I always kind of my year, not as much anymore now that, well, I only have one left that I'm homeschooling and she's, she's in her junior year of high school this year. So it is a lot different now, but I think because for so many years, I've always kind of intentionally set my new year as, and, my, and have come up with goals um, in August for the start of our school year. So anyway, I just try to be intentional about my life, <laughs> whether it's January or July or, you know, October. Um, as I've gotten older, I've just learned that that's really important and for me, it's not all about setting goals, although goals are important, but it's not all about um, like continually advancing and all of that. It's also about learning to savor each moment and to look around and see God's many gifts in my life, which is why I chose the word delight. I'm going to go. Okay. 
uh, just because I want to be even more intentional, intentional about looking at everything around me and delighting in his gifts and in his goodness. So, all right. So I'm not sure if Molly's going to hang out. Are you going to lay here with me? But let's go ahead and get started. And now you, if you've watched my podcast, you will have seen these two sweaters, um, towards the end of last year in one of those podcast episodes, but I'm going to go ahead and show you, let's start with my Felix pullover because I finished this. So when, when the new year came, I will say that I did get the desire to finish up my whips that I had um, kind of sleeping throughout the month of December. I was doing some gift knitting in December and I was also filming vlogmases every day so I didn't have as much knitting time because that vlogmas filming and editing takes up a lot of time so it was taking up a lot of my creative time of my day. Um, so I didn't, I really didn't do much knitting in December which is kind of strange but when the new year came, I thought I want to finish up these few projects that I have so that I can start fresh. And one of them was my Felix. This is my second Felix. And this is made with the same yarn I made my first Felix with, which is Barocco Merc Mercado. Oh boy, how do I not have any bands? Oh, here they are. I was going to say. So this is Barocco Mercado, Mercado, and I'll put the color number down below because it just has a number, not a name. And I made this one slightly bigger. I think my first Felix, I made the smallest size and this I made the next size up if I remember correctly. It's such a simple, fast sweater. I, and I think that's why I like it so much. And it's very basic yet. It has this really pretty raglan increase, like this lace detail along the raglan. I love that. Oh, she's going to join us. So she's like sitting right here uh, in front of me. Um, so the one thing I did notice is the neck because I made the neck size up. The neck on this is a little bit wider than I normally like. And, um, why don't I go ahead? I'm actually going to pause right here. I'm going to insert video of me actually wearing this. And so you can see what it looks like on. <laughs> So the neck is a bit wider than what I, than I would have liked. So perhaps what I should have done is cast on for the smallest neckline and then increased and, um, done it that way, but I didn't, it's okay. I'm still going to wear it. I just like a, a little bit of a tighter neck. And then, uh, I think I, I feel like I followed this to pattern, <laughs> but it's been a while because I casted this on, I, in the fall maybe the beginning of November, maybe even the end of October last year. I can't really remember, but I want to show you that I love this yarn and it's a very heathered yarn. And so this is like a coppery red color. It looks less, way less cop, less coppery on like when I'm looking at the screen, but if you see it in real life, it has red and then it also has strands of like a yellow gold. So it's like heathered. And I like that a lot. It gives it some depth because it is a very plain stockinette sweater. So I like the depth that I get from the yarn and I'm trying to think what, okay. Oh, it's, it's Peruvian Highland wool, hundred percent Peruvian Highland wool. I almost thought that maybe it had some, something else in there because it does have a nice halo to it. If you can see that. I don't remember if the pattern calls for a tubular cast off, but that's what I do for almost all of my sweaters. When you, you cast on, this is knit bottom or top down and I did not do like a tubular cast on, but I always do a tubular bind off because I like, I mean, I feel like if I'm going to take the time to knit a whole sweater, I want to have a nice, neat bind off. And so, 
I don't mind doing. I actually find the sewing portion of the tubular bind off quite relaxing, which is kind of funny because I don't typically like to seam things, but it doesn't bother me at all. And I think it might be because I know what a nice finish it gives. So that's how I bound off, but I don't think the pattern calls for a tubular bind off. I think it just says to bind off loosely. So yes, that's my first project that is completed. I haven't blocked it yet. Honestly, I probably won't even block it. I will probably just start to wear it because for me, just, I don't really feel like this needs, it's just stockinette. It's a thicker yarn. This is probably a, I would say, let me see here. So it calls for like US nine to 10 needles. So it's heavier than a worsted weight. And I always buy too much both with both of mine I've bought a skein too much so now I have and the funny thing is I knit I have even more yarn left with this one than I did my first one and I think it's because even though I knit a bigger size I used bigger knitting needles so I I knit this on size 10 and I can't remember what the pattern calls for and I left the pattern out in the living room but I I think my first one I went down a needle size and this one I either stayed with the recommended needle size or I went up a needle size and I think that's why I actually used less yarn and still got a bigger um, like I don't know this one's just a bit more drapey than my other one my other one has a bit of more denser fabric in fact I in fact I wore it yesterday and it's just sometimes it's too hot to even wear because the fabric is so dense and you know I can't it's hard for me to wear it in my own home I wore it to church so I figured you know it's always colder there so I thought oh I'll be fine which I was but then I got home and I had to take it off because it was too warm to wear in my house okay now the next sweater that I finished is um it is a sweater for my friend's son it is called the 11 Z's pattern by Lisa Chemery, or uh, some of you may know her as Frogonette, Frogonette knitting patterns. And I will show you this and then I will tell you what I did. So it is, it is completely done. Blocked, buttons sewn on, ready to be gifted. Isn't it cute? It's so cute. I love it. Um, I, so I cast on for a size two. My friend's son is probably 16 months. I, I lost track, but he's little. He's not real big. So I think I, I cast it on for a size two and it was starting to look, it was looking way too large. It was, I was like, this is going to be huge. He's not going to be able to wear this for several years. So then I kind of modified it as I went to get down to the 18 month size. And I think that it's, um, when I look at it, I think it's still going to be a little bit big, but I don't, I don't mind it being a little bit big because then he'll get, um, you know, a couple of years of wear out of it. And I'm, he can, you know, she can roll the sleeves up on it. I think this sleeves actually look cute. Like if you roll up a sleeve, I think that looks super cute. And the only thing I didn't do as far as, so I, I, I modified this for size. And so I can't tell you that I followed the pattern correctly because I had to do some like calculating to get from the size two to the size 18 months without it being weird. And I don't honestly even remember what I did. And that's how I knit. I for, I don't make, I don't keep notes. I'm horrible, I'm horrible like that. I just feel encumbered when I have to keep notes. It's helpful if you keep notes because then you can look back to your notes. And I always think, why didn't I keep notes? But then when I'm actually doing it, I just want to knit. I don't want to be writing things down. So I hardly ever keep notes. But I did leave off. This pattern calls for elbow patches that would they like this is a type of a moss stitch. So your pockets are um, you're supposed to have elbow patches that match the same pattern, the same texture. And I started to do that, but then because I had modified the size, uh, I was, I got confused about how to make it work. 
And then I thought, oh, maybe I don't want to put an elbow patch in because then that, if it's not right at the elbow, that may look funny because this probably isn't going to fit him exactly right now. So I started to think about it and I thought, I don't need elbow patches on this. I'm just going to leave the elbow patches off. They look super cute, but I just decided for me, I'm just going to leave them off. So this was the end result. I put these really pretty leather covered buttons on. I bought these off Etsy, oh my, several years ago. I really like them. I had five, I had five total and I only needed four. So it worked out, but isn't this cute? I know she's going to love it. <laughs> and let's face it, when we're giving gifts, knitted gifts for, um, children. It's not really so much for them as it is for their, their mother, their parents. <laughs> yeah. So, and for this, I used Lion Brand yarn, Woolies. Oh, sorry, Molly. Did I scare you? So let me show you what I used. Woolies by Lion Brand and, uh, the color Arrowwood. And I did that because I wanted her to be able to wash it and dry it in, in her washer and dryer if she wanted to. So yeah, second finished object. I don't think there's anything else that I want to say about this other than I feel like this sweater took me way longer than it should have. I don't know why. I don't know why it did. I, isn't that shawl collar so cute? I love that. I love that shawl collar. He's going to look so adorable in this. Okay, now, four works in progress to talk about. Not, I don't have four. I mean, to, let's talk about our works in progress, my works in progress. So this first one I'm going to show you, this is actually a gift. Maybe I shouldn't say too much other than it's a gift. And I'm going to show you it's a pair of socks. Okay. And this is out of my friend Jody from Flower Heel Fleeces. This is her yarn. I forget what it's called. Let me see. Farm Fresh Eggs. So this, ooh, the sun's peeking out. Not for long, but there it is. <laughs> it's super cloudy. So there's a little patch of blue, so it won't be out for long. But this is, this is it. It's, isn't that pretty? I had actually purchased this off of her last, I think it was, no, it was two falls ago. So it wasn't this past, it was 2021. I got this from her and I never did anything with it until just now. But the, this pattern, I think this is called the Kia, Kia socks. I'll link it down below, but it's just a really simple, like little garter nubs that give you this pattern up here, this texture, and then it's a slip stitch heel. Yeah, so it's really easy, very easy to memorize. I don't have to look at the pattern, which is why I can't remember what it's called, but I'm pretty sure it's the Kia Socks by Dawn Henderson. Um, yeah, I've had this pattern f for a while. So, but yeah, that is, that is the one work in progress. I have a deadline for these. So I'm trying to work on these. I just started them. So I feel like I'm doing really good. And then my next whip, it's a long time coming friends. It is definitely a long time coming. I have been, so I'm talking about my thrummed mittens, which I showed a little bit on my vlogmas episodes. And I have been wanting to make thrummed mittens for probably five years because I go outside a lot, even in the winter. And I have really good warm weather clothing or cooled weather clothing except for gloves. I have never been able to find a pair of gloves that actually keep my fingers warm and from not hurting. And so I had heard about thrummed mittens at one point and I thought, well, oh, that sounds like it could be a good option. And, um, I just never casted them on. And I don't know why, because I have so much fiber because I'm also a spinner, which you can see my wheel here next to me. So I have lots of just spare fiber laying around that I could use to knit in to the thrummed mittens, but I just never did it. And then this year, right before Christmas, I thought, 
I am going for it because we had a, uh, so winter storm Elliot came and it was freezing for like a week solid sub zero temperatures Fahrenheit. So it was really cold. It was like wind chill of negative 30 or something like that. And honestly, we really didn't go out much during those few days. There were a few really intense days because it was also very windy. We really didn't go out much because that was just really intense. But I, it reminded me that I need some warm, thick, good mittens and I've been wanting to do it. So Amber, just do it, right? So I cast it on a pair and I have, I'll link the pattern down below, but I will say this pattern would not be good for a beginner knitter because it doesn't give a lot of direction. It's a very basic it's more like a hybrid between a pattern and a recipe or just like it just gives you guidance. I mean, it does tell you the number of stitches to cast on, but it's not if I was knitting this as a beginner knitter, I would have been confused with some things. So I don't if you feel confident in your ability to figure things out, like if you've been knitting long enough, then you will be you'll be fine with this. But if you're a new knitter, I would not use this pattern. And basically, I just got on and I just I didn't want to pay for a thrummed mitten pattern. I wanted something free because I knew that it wasn't going to be anything complicated. And so there were multiple ones that came up. Um, but this is my first mitten minus the thumb. I haven't added the thumb in yet. But I used for this um, Quince & Co. Owl. I had actually had two skeins of this sitting around. And this is in the cilantro colorway. And then the fiber that I'm using is just some, it's like a silvery white color. I think it's probably merino. It feels like merino. And, um, but I don't. I don't know. I had ordered it off of like a fiber D stash several years ago and I just got a big like box stuffed full of it. And I don't remember what kind of fiber it is, which is again, if I would have kept notes, I would know, but I don't know cause I don't keep notes. So let me, Oh, I just love these so much. They're even already starting to felt just for me trying them on. But, um, so here you can see, what they look like on in the little tiny thrums, which look like little hearts. Now, some patterns, these are each row is offset. So see my, the pattern I chose, they all go in a line until you start to do the increases. Then that, then it varies. But some of the patterns, if you like the offset thrums, you can, they kind of like stagger. Those also look nice. Um, but yeah, they're so warm. I really like them. This color green is going to match my winter coat perfectly. And let me show you like the inside for those of you that don't know what thrummed mittens are. You're basically everywhere where you see like a little heart. That is where I took a piece of fiber. So let me pull some off real quick. So I would take like a piece of fiber and I would just kind of twist it a little bit just to make it less fuzzy. Not that it really matters to be honest, but I would, it, it made it easier to grab this with my needle and then I would just knit this right in. So everywhere that you see a heart is one of these. So basically here's my second one. I'll show you in this. This is because it'll be easier, but see, this is what you get on the inside. You get this really thick wooly lining. It's so soft and it's so cozy. <laughs> I love it. And these, they're really fast because this is a worsted weight yarn and you know, it's just a plain mitten. So yeah, I love them. I need to get moving on it. I need to get moving on it so I can get them finished and wear them. So I don't think I have anything else to say about these. Um, I'm just, I'm knitting them on, so I'm knitting them on just, uh, like the nine inch circulars. I think these are size five, chow goo, the bamboo. <sighs> yeah. I'm so proud of myself that I actually finally casted a pair of these on. And the, 
The reason I say that is because I've been wanting to for so many years and I just never did it. So yay for me for finally doing it. And this is nice because those are actually a necessity for me. I need warm gloves. So it's always nice when your desire to knit something um, like kind of collides with your need for something. So I knit a lot of things I don't need. Most of what I knit, I don't need. I have lots of hats. I have lots of shawls. I have lots of sweaters. I don't need them. I knit them because I enjoy the process and I really enjoy the product. But the fact that I needed really warm gloves, it was just, it makes it, the experience more special, right? Knitting not only for the enjoyment of it, but also out of necessity. Okay, so my last whip that I want to share with you guys, at least active, I have a couple pairs of socks on the needles. I have a sweater that I really need to just pull off the needles and frog, and I just, it's a color work sweater, and so when I, I know when I frog it, I'm going to have lots of little pieces of yarn, so I've been putting that off for over a year. So I'm not going to talk about any of those whips, but I do want to talk about my Delia scrap can because I um, I need to just start sewing all the squares together. And actually, this pattern in this pattern you crochet the squares together. So let me show you my stack. I've got a big stack here. I got my big stack of squares. It's a lot of squares. This was super fun. If you know how to crochet or if you want to learn how to crochet, this was, I don't think this was hard. Um, and I talked about this before, but I, for my circles, for each circle, I just held a bunch of different yarn weights together. Some were fingering weights, so I would hold four different fingering weights together. This one was like a DK weight, so I held DK with two fingering weights together. Um, this was the one that I did. Is it this one? Yeah, I think this was the one that I held four, four different fingering weights together. And this one as well. And so I just kind of like picked um, kind like an overall color scheme and then I have some, so these are my squares. Oops, <laughs> it's hard to hold all of them. These are my four different squares. So all of my squares look very, like this is what they are, okay? There we go. And then they get seamed together. But the way that the pattern writer has you do this is she actually has you crochet them together. And I'm super excited about that because I just stated a few minutes ago I don't like seaming very much. And this would be a lot of seaming, so I am excited to be able to just to crochet this together. I actually have enough yarn, and oh, I need to show you all, I have even more circles, like in middle, the middle insert, to make even more, but I think what I'm going to do is just start seaming these together and then see if I like the size, and if I want it to be bigger, then I'll go ahead and work the squares around those center circles and then I can add them on. But I am really excited to get this finished because I think it's going to be a really beautiful, just basic cuddly afghan to have in the house. Okay, so that, that was my last whip. Now let's just talk about the two cast-ons I'm going to be casting on actually probably today because one of them is for my um, my kids. So, so some of you would have met Adrian during Vlogmas. He visited from Colorado. He used to live here and would um, spend a lot of time at our house. So we became very close with him. He was first friends with my son Ian, who is um, my 19-year-old. But then my daughter Lily, who is my 17-year-old, they also became very good friends. So he comes back and visits. He moved to Colorado in 2020. And since then, he's been back multiple times, and he stays here with us when he comes. But anyway, he asked me a while ago to, to knit him a hat, and I never did. And so when he was back here in December, or no, it was November. It was November, so you wouldn't have met him in Vlogmas. It was November, because uh, he came back for his birthday, and we had like a little party here for him. He asked me about it. And I was like, oh my gosh. So we looked through all my yarn, and I didn't really have anything that he liked, so then the following week, Lily and I went to Yarns by Design, which is my local-ish yarn, yarn store. We picked out a few 
uh, skeins of yarn we thought he would like, and then we actually sent pictures to him, and he picked out a skein. Um, it's this Madeline Tosh, and this is Tosh Vintage, and this is in the Whiskey Barrel color, and I think I showed this before on like an acquisitions portion of the vlog, but it is browns, blues, grays, you can see right, oh, that's actually a really good representation of the color right there. Um, so I got this and I'm going to make the Watchman, or no, it's not the Watchman's, it's just the Watch Cap by Pearl Soho. Free pattern, I'm really trying not to purchase patterns right now, I'm trying to use patterns that I've already purchased, use free patterns, or use patterns from the many knitting books that I have. <laughs> um, just trying to be more responsible in that aspect. But yeah, this is what I'm going to cast on because it does call for a DK weight yarn, which is what this is. And I think this would be a good like, style for Adrian. He's actually coming back in February to go skiing um, with my husband, my daughter, and a couple other friends because it's Lily's birthday and that's what she, she wanted to go skiing for her birthday. So they're going to go skiing. So that's uh, coming up soon. So I want to, I need to get this going so I can have this done and give it to him when he comes. Because what my goal was when he left, um, when he left our house in, back in November, I thought I'm going to knit this for him and give it to him for Christmas, like mail it to him. But that didn't happen. So February it is. And he has long winters in Colorado, so he'll get plenty of wear out of it even in February, you know, even just waiting till February to give it to him. Okay, and my last cast on that I'm also going to start, this is a, a gift for another friend's daughter. So I have a couple of friends who have young children and um, these are called the Baby Starlet Mittens. So they're thumbless mittens and my friend's daughter is five months old, six months old. I think she's six months old now. So she doesn't need a thumb in her mittens. Um, but I'm going to make that for her with these two yarns. And this is leftover from my boho chic mosaics shawl. And I think those two will look really nice. And then they'll also be gender neutral so that my friend can wear this, can put them back. Um, you know, for any future children because, you know, they are tiny. So she's literally only going to get use out of them this winter. Um, and then, but she can set them back and have them for future children as well. So yeah, this is a rather short podcast, which I'm okay with. I thought, oh, um, should I film now or should I wait? But I thought, no, because sometimes it is uh, a lot to have to post a long podcast. So I'm just going to stop there. I think with my knit talk, I don't think there's anything else that I wanted to mention. Um, do you guys have any specific knitting plans like for the new year? I don't, I see people's make nine boards or, you know, I see people doing actually what I saw just recently was someone had made a whole journal spread on their making goals and that appeals to me more than a make nine board, but realistically, I feel like I would make that and then I wouldn't probably look at it again. <laughs> so I don't even, I just, it's so funny. I, I, okay. So here's the thing. I'm a firstborn. I am, I am very much type A personality, but I have to say as I have aged, I have really loosened up on a lot of things and I've become more realistic in what I no, I'll do or I won't do or what I'll stick with or not. And so I don't use those, that as an excuse, but I just know, okay, I could make and make nine board, but what are the chances that I'm actually going to make anything from those? Because reality, I really like to just go with the flow with how I'm feeling as far as my making goes. So if I feel like casting something on, I want to be able to cast it on. But if I have a make nine board, then I'm afraid I might feel like I need to stick to that. Does that make sense? So it's just mind play. I, am, I realize that I am fully aware of that, but I will say one of my goals, creative goals 
Okay, no, a couple of my creative goals. So my wheel here, it has not been used for a very long time. Like I'm embarrassed how long I've let this sit here. In fact, it's going to need oiled up because it's just, it's been so long. I'm going to have to get it, give it a complete like, um, like will spa day to get it ready to go. But I want to start spinning again because I haven't done that for such a long time. And it is such a soothing practice to me to spin. And I honestly, I have a whole shelf of hand spun yarn. So another thing that I'd like to really do is actually start using my hand spun yarn. Um, and because I, I have used some of it, but most of it I have not. And it's kind of a silly way of thinking, but I like, I spin it and then I just let it sit there and I stare at it. I need to use it. So those are two, I guess you could say goals of mine. And then I also want to work on my dollhouse, which I showed in my second winter vlog. I kind of showed you guys that, um, I want to express myself creativity creatively with that. And I also want to get um, back into my watercolor painting practice. So those are my very loosely set goals. I'm not even writing them down. They're just floating in my head. <laughs> uh, because yeah, they have to be balanced in there with my life. So when I feel inspired and when I have time, that's when I do those things. It's so much easier for me just to grab my knitting because I know how to knit. I may have to learn like a new stitch or something, but it's not a big deal. It's not anything that I have to drag a bunch of stuff out, I, you know, so it feels a little bit easier than like working on my dollhouse where I have to, I have to finish ripping out all the wallpaper and all that stuff that that's in it from the prior owner. But anyway, those are just my thoughts on my creative endeavors for the year. And I was curious about yours. If you want to, if you so feel inclined to share them, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up now though. Um, I hear my family coming up and out of their rooms to get lunch. So I want to go out and talk to, uh, to them all. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Please consider subscribing and liking if you enjoyed this video. I would appreciate that a lot and, um, keep your eye out for my winter vlogs. I, like I said, I do plan on continuing those as I feel inspired to do so. They're really fun for me to do. And as I had said in one of my other vlogs, they help me to kind of like zone in on the beauty in my life. So I feel like that's, um, a positive thing about them for me. And, um, yeah, that's it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful, um, January and I will talk to you soon.